You use them every day, but have no idea how they're made. From flip-flops to gas cylinders, chopsticks to chandeliers, let's take a wild ride through the factories behind your favorite everyday things. This company is going to blow your socks off. Have you ever seen a chandelier so stunning it looks like it's dripping luxury? That's Silcom Light, the masters of Venetian glass lighting. Based in Italy, this company doesn't just make lights, they sculpt pure elegance from molten glass. Every piece is hand-blown by skilled artisans, blending centuries-old Murano glass techniques with modern design that'll leave your jaw on the floor. From bold, futuristic forms to classic regal chandeliers, Silcom turns homes, hotels, and even palaces into works of art. The Murano glass technique Silcom uses dates back to the 13th century, and the secret methods have been passed down through generations. Just look at this, absolute pure skill and craftsmanship. A horse that is perfectly made, perfectly balanced, and perfectly detailed within just a few minutes. You see that red LPG cylinder in your kitchen? Yeah, the one your mom guards like it's a family heirloom? Let's see how that beast is born in a high-tech LPG cylinder factory in China where steel, fire, and pressure come together like an action movie. It all starts with thick steel sheets, chopped and rolled into perfect cylinders. Kind of like making a burrito, but with metal and way more danger. These rolled sheets are then welded shut because any leak could turn your dinner into a demolition. After that, the domed ends are pressed and welded on with heat hot enough to cook your noodles mid-air. Now comes the moment of truth, the hydrostatic test. The cylinder is filled with water and pressurized, like it's auditioning for a NASA launch. It has to survive over 30 bars of pressure, that's like stacking 20 cars on it. Fail the test, it's back to the scrap pile, then it's off to the beauty salon, sandblasted, rust-proofed and spray-painted that signature red. Finally, the valve is installed with the care of disarming a bomb. No shortcuts, no second chances, because safety is the star of this show. So, the next time you light up your stove, just remember, behind that click was a factory full of fire, force, and some seriously heavy metal engineering. All right, next up, toilet paper. Yep, that soft little roll we all take for granted until 2020 reminded us it's gold in disguise. But have you ever wondered how it's actually made? Let's head to the Von Drehl Corporation, one of the biggest names in the bathroom business. It all starts with giant bales of recycled paper. We're talking stuff from offices, books, maybe even your failed math test. These are shredded, mixed with water, and turned into a soupy pulp that looks like a paper milkshake. Then, it's cleaned, filtered, and whitened to get that soft, clean look we all demand when, well, you know. Next, the pulp hits the Fordrenier machine, which flattens it into thin sheets and dries it faster than your crush ignoring your texts. Then comes the magic. The sheets are pressed, textured for softness, and rolled onto jumbo reels bigger than your car. These are sliced, wrapped, and rolled into those familiar white rounds sitting in your bathroom. What's wild is Von Drehle makes over two million rolls a day, enough to circle the planet if we all just panicked at once again. 
Here is a fun fact. The average person uses about 100 rolls of toilet paper every year. That's enough toilet paper to cover your entire neighborhood. Twice. All right. Ever slipped into a pair of colorful flip-flops and thought, man, these are lighter than my responsibilities? Let's see how they're made. It all starts with big bouncy sheets of EVA foam. That's the squishy stuff that makes these flip-flops feel like you're walking on clouds. These sheets are dyed in bold colors, then heat pressed and cut into that familiar sole shape we all love. But here's the twist. No holes, no popping straps. Instead, the straps are glued on using high strength adhesive, tough enough to survive beach runs and bathroom sprints. Once attached, they're pressed firmly to bond tight, tested for grip, and paired up for packaging. Simple, stylish, and ready to slap the ground with every step you take. Here is an interesting fact. Some factories can produce over 50,000 pairs a day. That's a flip-flop for every person in a football stadium, plus the ref. Next up, silicone products. From kitchen spatulas to baby bottle nipples and even phone cases, silicone is everywhere. But how is it made? And more importantly, is it safe? It all starts with silica, a natural material found in sand. This is heated with carbon at extremely high temperatures to form silicon, which is then mixed with oxygen, hydrogen, and other elements to create flexible, durable silicone rubber. The liquid silicone is poured into molds, cured at high heat, and out come products that can handle everything from boiling water to freezer temps without breaking a sweat. But is it safe? Short answer, yes. Food grade and medical grade silicone is non-toxic, heat resistant, BPA free, and doesn't leach chemicals. Just don't confuse it with plastic. It's in a whole different league of durability and safety. Here is an interesting fact. Silicone can handle temperatures from minus 100 degrees Celsius to over 250 degrees Celsius, making it perfect for both ovens and Antarctica. Let's get chopping, literally. Ever wondered how a simple pair of scissors is made? It's not just metal and magic. It starts with high carbon stainless steel sheets, chosen for their strength and sharpness. These sheets are stamped into blade shapes and then heat treated to harden them because nobody wants floppy scissors, right? Here is another interesting fact. A high quality scissor blade can be ground to an edge as fine as 0.1 millimeters. That's thinner than a human hair. Next, the blades are precision ground, giving them that razor sharp edge. Then comes the pivot hole, drilled and aligned perfectly, so both blades meet in a smooth slicing motion. After that, handles are added, either plastic molded or rubber coated, for comfort and grip. Finally, the two blades are riveted or screwed together, adjusted for tension and tested if they don't snip cleanly, back to the sharpening bench. Next up, bamboo round chopsticks, the ultimate tool for sushi, noodles, and pretending you know how to use them. But how are they made? It all starts with, you guessed it, bamboo, strong, lightweight, and grows faster than your unread messages. The bamboo stalks are cut, peeled, and sliced into long, thin sticks. These are then rounded and smoothed using machines that spin, shape, 
and shave them into perfect chopstick form, no splinters allowed. Next, they're polished, sometimes steamed or heat treated for hygiene, and then dried. Some get printed logos or decorative tips, and finally, they're paired up and wrapped faster than you can say, extra soy sauce. It's simple, sustainable, and super efficient. Next up, the unsung hero of every delivery, the corrugated box. Yep, those brown boxes that survive shipping, stacking, and the wrath of your box cutter. At Georgia Pacific, one of the largest packaging giants in the US, the process begins with large rolls of craft paper, strong, stiff, and ready for battle. But this is where the magic happens. One flat layer, one wavy layer, called the flute, and another flat layer on top. These are glued together under heat and pressure, forming that iconic sandwich structure that gives the box its strength. It's like a paper lasagna, but way tougher. The giant sheets are then cut, creased, folded, and printed based on customer needs, whether it's for pizza, sneakers, or a 3 a.m. impulse buy. Corrugated boxes can be made and shipped within 24 hours and are recyclable, making them both fast and eco-friendly. And here's the cool part. Over 90% of corrugated boxes in the U.S. are made from recycled material, making your Amazon habit slightly less guilty. And if you already didn't know, in just one year, enough corrugated boxes are recycled in the U.S. to equal over 400 million trees saved. Next up, CNC bending of beams for trailers. Sounds heavy? That's because it is. These massive steel beams form the backbone of trailers, and bending them isn't a job for muscle, it's a job for machines. Enter the CNC press brake, a high-precision beast that uses computer numerical control to bend steel like it's folding origami. The process starts with long, thick steel beams being loaded onto the press. The CNC system is programmed with exact bend angles and measurements. No eyeballing here. The hydraulic ram then presses the beam against a die, applying tons of force to get that perfect curve. Every bend must be flawless, because when your trailer's carrying tons of cargo, even a few degrees off can spell disaster. And finally, let's lie down on the process of making a latex mattress. It all begins in nature, with the sap of rubber trees, also known as liquid latex. Tapped gently, kind of like collecting maple syrup, the sap is harvested without harming the tree, making it super eco-friendly. Once collected, it's filtered, whipped, and poured into molds, where it's baked like a cake using the Dunlop or Talale process depending on the bounce and firmness you want. Did you know a single rubber tree can produce up to 19 pounds of latex each year? And latex mattresses can last 15 to 20 years, twice as long as regular foam. After curing, the latex is washed, dried, and cut into layers. Some are left dense, others perforated for airflow, because no one wants a sweaty nap. And there you have it. From glowing glass chandeliers to bendable steel beams, sushi-grabbing chopsticks to tree-borne mattresses, we've just toured the wild, wonderful world of how everyday things are made. So next time you flip a switch, cut with scissors, or crash on your bed, just remember, it all started with raw materials and a whole lot of ingenuity. Hit that like button if you learned something new.